We have been predicting the winner of this race for the last two weeks over and over again. And at last, we are going to find out the Women's 2023 Ironman World Championships has started. The pro women are out on the swim and we are in the thick of it here at the start, sat on the pier of the iconic Kona race. I have got goosebumps from that start. We are going to be doing our very best today to bring you all of the updates as this race unfolds. It's going to be an incredibly exciting one and I cannot wait. Well, it's over 50 minutes since the swim starts and all of the main contenders are out of the water. And I bet you're dying to know who was leading it. No surprises, it was Lucy Charles Barkley. I think slightly surprising that she's completely on her own. Lauren Brandon, Taylor Nib, or a few of those stronger swimmers didn't manage to stick on the feet. She was off from the gun. Well, she had an almost minute and a half lead at the end of the swim. And then there was a group of six chasing, which did include Taylor Nib. We had a couple of on their own, Sarah, Crowley actually ended up being on her own. But then, this is the interesting bit, an absolutely huge group. So Lucy swam a time of 49.36. And the big group, which included and was led by Fenella Lanridge, were 53 minutes 58 for Fenella. So all around the 54 minutes. And it included Chelsea Sodaro, Fenella Lanridge, Kat Matthews, Lisa Norden, Annie Haug, and Daniela Reef. So that is the absolute power group. And we're going to see an exciting bike coming off that result from the swim. But I'm delighted to say that it isn't just going to be me giving you the race report today. We're going to be heading out to the start of the bike to catch up with pro athlete Indy Lee, who is here supporting some of the fellow athletes. Well, she's supporting everyone anyway. And she knows every single woman competing. So we're going to be getting a great insight from Indy. Okay, well, you've just seen Indy doing a very important job with her clipboard or her, her whiteboard, sorry. You are very official, so I'm going to be coming to you for the end because you know literally every girl, every woman that's gone past and I'm like, you know, get the, get the main contenders. Can you just give us a quick run through of what has happened so far? We've literally just seen the first, the first glimpse on the bike. Yeah, so um, Lucy's done her thing and gone off the front on her own. And then, uh, yeah, then there was a big pack about two minutes back from them, which had Kat, Chelsea, um, Anne, uh, I think Daniela was just off the back of it. Vanella was in there. So, yeah, it's looking pretty spicy. And what about Taylor? Because she was somewhere in the middle there, wasn't she? She wasn't quite in that group. She was ahead of that group. Um, do you expect her to swim with Lucy? Yeah, I think a lot of people predicted that Taylor would perhaps be able to get on Lucy's feet, but Lucy was away and gone pretty much from the off. So, um, like, it's her first Ironman. We don't know if she's playing it cautious. and. She's pretty smart, so I'm sure she knows what she's doing. Um, and what do you think? Do you think that big cat's get, um, pack is going to catch up with Taylor and those few that were in the middle, or what, what do you reckon we're going to see unfold? Yeah, I think that pack's going to move through the people in front of them like a train, and it's just going to sweep everyone up, and hopefully it's going to result in an exciting run. Okay, well, we'll hopefully catch you a couple more times. I know you're going to be heading out to sort of the end, end point. Hey, Heather, it's a busy day. It is a busy day, and as a result, I'm going to be using you to give me some updates. So thanks, Indy. We'll be hearing from you again. No problem. Well, we're obviously in the right place because everyone here is supporting, including Billy Harris, who's obviously coach and partner of Fenella Language. And now we know Fenella's an incredibly strong swimmer, and we often see her coming out sort of on her own or near the front. She had quite a big group with her. Do you think that was, was that the plan that you guys had? Uh, kind of the plan. The plan was never to try and swim with Lucy or Lauren because I think Flan did that last year and she felt a little bit heavy coming out of the water so she said I'm just going to swim a little bit easier this year but the plan definitely wasn't to have Daniela and Kat there but they've had a great swim. I think this year everyone's elevated their swim game so they saw last year what happened with the gaps but yeah she's in a good place and that's a big big group so it's going to be good on the bike. And what do you do? You think that that group will stay as one, or can you see any bits, any dropping off, or any joining it, or going off the front? Uh, it's hard to tell right now, but it looked like it was quite hard already when they came past us. I think Danielle has made up about a minute already, so I think she's probably going to ride off. And whoever wants to go with her, then they'll be throwing their kind of plan out the window because I think she's going to be riding very hard. So we've just been at the turn, turning in quite high. They've got about 60 k to go. 55k to go. Uh, Lucy's still powering off in front. And then uh, Taylor, who had a one minute penalty, was seemed pretty comfortable. She was chatting away and she came past. Uh, unfortunately, we think Kat has dropped out at Harvey. Uh, we don't know why. Um, and then there's a group of about five girls all working, sorry, women, all working together. Um, which Ruth Astor just got off the back of and seemed to be moving through, so it's hectic. 
Well, thanks to Indy for the update. Sadly, we couldn't join her out on the road, but we have made a sweaty walk down to find somewhere to watch the bike unfold. And the Zwift has have it on the big screen behind us, so they very kindly let us join in. And the bike is well underway. Well, actually, we've only got less than 60K to go for the leaders. And it is still Lucy Charles Barkley. She is bossing it at the front. Taylor Nib has been riding solo for a long while. She looked as though she was closing on Lucy, but interestingly, she did stop to take something from her special needs bag, stop, put both her feet down. She's been looking like she's just been enjoying it out there and seen her smiling at the cameras and having fun. So that could be a sign that she's relaxed and we could see a strong run coming from her. But the, most of the moving has been going on further back. Lauren Brandon stayed in third for a while, but has now dropped off. And interestingly, Daniela had moved up into third. She'd ridden through that pack and left the rest of them in her wake. However, we have just seen her suddenly drop back. So we don't know quite what's going on with Daniela because she was looking so strong. It was the Daniela that we know. Lisa Norden has been having a phenomenal ride. She has moved up into third. And Laura Phillip, who was outside of that massive group, it looked as though maybe her race was not going to go to plan, has ridden incredibly hard. And she didn't just stop there and ride with the group. She has moved herself up and pushed on up to fourth place. Um, Lisa Norden's having a storming bike ride as well. Last year was her first year in Kona where she finished, I think it was fifth inside the top 10. So has she learned from that? We are still 60k to go. A lot can happen. And obviously we've still got the run, but we will give you the update at the end of the bike. As you can tell, I am very excited and hopefully you guys are watching it too. Well, we've come out to the other side of the Zwift house. You can see all the guys supporting. And right now you can probably hear the helicopter right above me. That is because our leader is going to be coming to us very shortly. The top eight athletes are off the bike. That was an exciting second half. No changes at the front. Lucy Charles Barkley has set off on the run with a three minute 49 lead. Taylor Nib had to actually serve a one minute penalty for accidental littering. She's having a few problems with her bottles, ended up putting them down her top, but she seemed pretty calm. She actually dropped her gel heading out of the run transition, went back and picked it up, so didn't make that mistake the second time. So behind her though, having a great race, it's Laura Phillip in third. Admittedly over 10 minutes behind Lucy, but still in that podium position. Jocelyn McCauley fourth. Lisa Norden still in the top five, but just dropped back a little bit. And then we've got two big names, Daniela Reef and Annie Haug in sixth and seventh. Annie Haug is 12 minutes behind Lucy. Well, look at the form. You can't actually see, but Lucy Charles Barkley as she flies past. She is just cruising along there. Could this be the moment that Lucy Charles Barkley turns those four second places into a win? It's very early days. There's a marathon ahead. Well, 40K to go to be exact but it's going to be a very exciting race to see who, if anyone, can chase down Lucy Charles Barkley. Well, we've seen our top three come past Laura Phillip making the third place, but right now, here is the ones to watch. It is Annie Haug and Dan Yeller, who obviously have both performed and been on top of the podium here. Daniela five times, Annie Haug 2019 champion. You cannot write those two off. We were surprised to see Daniela drop a fair bit on the bike and she has already lost a little bit of ground on Annie Haug, but Annie Haug's one of the strongest runners in the field. But a little bit of an update. We haven't seen Kat Matthews come through, so I think sadly I haven't had it confirmed yet, but she is out of the race, which is pretty devastating. We don't know why, but we hope that she's okay. Chelsea Sodaro came off the bike, I think in 19th, about 30 minutes down from the winners. And we know she's an incredible runner, but that is surely too much. Fenella Langridge, another one of those who um, seems to not be having her day today. So there are a few casualties that we've seen. Laura Siddle, she's been moving up and having a great day. Ruth Arstel, we should be seeing coming past soon because she actually came off the bike in ninth. Well, as I've mentioned, we are outside the Zwift supporters tent and we've got a very big Zwift supporter here. But Tim, we just saw one of the mentees, Ruth Arstel, go past just ahead of Sarah True, one of the mentors. I mean, pretty good day for Zwift, but how are you finding watching this? Oh, it's fantastic. I would say it's hot, but I can't say that with these amazing women. Lucy Charles off the front looks absolutely amazing. Taylor took a while to get into her rhythm, but um, yeah, I hope Ruth can keep this up because she's had a tough this year year this year with injury. She really has and we've just seen if we're looking at the split Laura Phillip at 622 pace matching Lucy Taylor a little bit slower and then we've got Dan Annie? Daniela Annie? Annie Haug 614s this was a slightly old one there what are your thoughts and where who, who's coming through where are the movers going to be? I think the movers are coming through Laura Phillips 
looks like she's a solid podium. Annie's going to come through. But you know what? We've still got the Queen K. Chelsea Sodaro was a long way down, but my gosh, she looked amazing. She was moving so, so well. I think once we get on the Queen K, we'll see. Here it's about managing your heat and getting those run legs going as quick as possible. You know that noise? That's because we have got the leader just here passing. Charles Barkley, she is looking like it could be time to turn those silvers into gold. She is looking so strong. We're out of the energy lab, well, at the end almost of the energy lab for all these athletes, and my goodness, they were so glad to see the back of this horrific part of the course where it's just known for being so, so tough. Looks as though we're going to have a bit more of a fight still between second, third, well, the top six really positions could change i'm going to keep you updated taylor is still in second laura phillip has dropped into fourth place because annie Howard is running so strong chelsea star has been calling up through the field but i think might have too much work to do we'll see i think we are about to witness a crucial point in the race annie Howe is right on the shoulder of Taylor Lib. This is second and third. Here they come. Come on, girls. Go, 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 girls. There it is, happening right here. Anne looks so composed. She is just cruising past. That is anyhow moving into second position. Taylor Lib in third. Lucy as well gone. And she's just going to see what Taylor can do. If she can hang on and have her back, Laura Philippus. Come on, Laura. Go, Laura. Come on, keep working. Go, go, go. All right, that's fourth place. I think the podium is coming from those four. In what order? You have to wait and see. You might recognise Philip from our video last week when we followed Laura Philip for her last hard training day. And he is going to be pretty impressed with home performance, I'm sure. Philip, can I just ask you very quickly? Yes. Um, Laura's in fourth. Um, how has her day going so far? Uh, I think, like, she did her best swim, like, by time-wise. Um, sadly, she missed the group with that. Um, but there we see that, like, the field is improving and improving. Uh, so this is really nice. Um, yeah, uh, then she had to work hard on the bike. Uh, I think she did it tactically very well, brilliant. Um, and now she's in the hunt for the podium. And yeah, it would be nice to get on it. And, oh my God, it's hot out here. I've never been out to the Queen K to watch, but I am trying to spectate like a, like a pro. So I've been following Indy Lee, who is an actual pro. And she's been taking me around the course and the places to watch. And it's been pretty insightful, but now, I've got to cycle back into town. I hope to catch the winners. And so I'm going to leave these guys out here following Ruth. They've done a pretty good job of spectating and supporting. Go on, Ray. Just keep your rhythm and the ice. All the ice. That's a pro how to spectate and how to sport. <laughs> Indy, thank you so much for your insights. I'm going to head back now. It's been a pleasure. Um, but yeah, what are your like your thoughts? Because it's almost wrapped up. We've maybe it's got a change of one more position. Mm. Do you feel like you want to come here and race in a couple of years' time? Uh, yeah, it really does make me want to come here and race. It it looks like absolute carnage. It's so hard. <laughs> it's so hot. But yeah, it's just I I get the whole mystique of Kona now, and yeah, it does make it motivates me to want to come race here for sure. Awesome. Well, maybe next time I'm going to have to spectate on my own. I'm going to have to cheer you on. So, Indy, thank you so much. No, thank you. Better dash to finish. Well, at last, Lucy Charles Barkley has turned those silvers into gold. What an incredible performance by the Brit. She had a new course record on the way, led from wire to wire. We very rarely see that at a World Championships. She had the quickest swimmers of the day, as we know. She also had the quickest bike of the day, which might have surprised some people, and the fourth quickest run, which was enough. She completed in a 2.57.38. Only her second time, I think, going under the three-hour marker in an Ironman. And what a time to do it. We've seen Annie Haug chase down Lucy Charles Barkley many 
three times before, including in 2019. She did have an incredible run again, the fastest of the day, 2.48 for Anne Hag, which was a new run course record. So times were broken here today, but she finished on the podium in second place. And there it was the changes. So it was looking like it might be close between Taylor Nib and Laura Phillip. Philip, her coach and partner, obviously pretty hopeful. And it came true for Laura as she made the pass over Taylor with just a mile to go. And she got on the podium after that fourth place last year. I think she was absolutely delighted with a really solid performance, a very strong bike, doing a lot of that work on her own. After, in her own words, a weaker swim, Taylor Nib finishing fourth in her first ever Ironman. She is only 25 years old and she's qualified for the Olympic Games. She'd never run more than 19 miles before that. So I just think we need to remember what an incredible performance that is. And we're going to see a lot more from her. And then, well, from one extreme of the generation to the other or experience at this racing, it was Daniela Reef. And again, just so strong. She finished in the top five. She never gave up. Obviously not her finest day, but another top five finish. There are rumors it might be her last time on the island, but I think we all really hope to see her back. And then we'll just quickly flick through the rest. So Chelsea Sadar. She came off the bike in 19th, moved up to 6th with a quick 2.53 run. She just looks so comfortable on the run. Sky Munch consistent in 7th. Sarah True, she had a child here supporting her out on course and just looked happy and relaxed all day. She finished in 8th place. Lisa Norden just dropped her back a little bit on the run, but still inside the top 10 with 9th. And then Jocelyn McCauley holding on to that 10th place. And I am sounding a little tired and I've only been watching this race. I can't imagine how the athletes feel. It has been an incredible, I mean, it's obviously been a record breaking year in the overall time in the run course record. And the fact that it's the first time for women only on this island. And I have absolutely thoroughly enjoyed watching it and being part of this. And I really hope you guys have enjoyed our attempt to bring you some of that excitement. Well, if you have enjoyed it, we'd love your support. Do give us a like.